Hi Year 12, uh, what we're going to go through now on this little uh, short video is we're just going to have a talk about this student's answer. Um, this is a real student answer from about four years ago now um, and it was a good opportunity for us to, to look at the um, what the student did really well, where we can improve the answer and parts of the essay which uh, I advise the student to completely get rid of. So if you haven't done it already, what you need to do is you need to read through the entirety of the essay and you need to effectively create a colour key and just go back and highlight parts of the essay that you would keep. So that's anything that meets the criteria, anything that's answering the question directly or parts of the essay that you think are good and should be reused. So we'll just, um, to have us all doing the same thing, we'll highlight that green. Uh, parts of the essay that aren't meeting the assessment criteria where the student has wrote something that's incorrect or irrelevant, it's not actually answering the question that's been asked, uh, will highlight red. And then the yellow parts which are potentially meeting the assessment criteria but may be lacking detail or slightly muddled and we can change it to improve the answer uh, and improve the paragraph, will highlight those in yellow. Towards the bottom of that document is a very shortened version of um, the assessment objectives, the, the mark scheme effectively. I haven't included level one um, for each of the assessment objectives because this essay does answer um, the question that's asked, so it's not a level one answer at all. And I've, I've had to remove uh, some of the words um, from the, the actual mark scheme that probably wouldn't be too familiar with you uh, to yourselves as students and um, so the idea is that you can use this just as a guide to help you decide whether or not you think the student answer uh, meets the criteria it's green it's irrelevant and needs to be removed or it potentially meets the criteria but we could do something with that information to to potentially improve it and maybe push it up the levels so please make sure that you've highlighted and gone back through the essay It'll probably look like the vast majority of your essay is now colour coded. Uh, it doesn't matter if you've just highlighted certain sentences that you want to focus on. But what we'll do, we'll go through the answers together uh, and I'll, I'll explain from an examiner's point of view what's the strengths and the weaknesses of this essay. And then once you've done this activity, you can finish off by condensing this information down into um, a more simple revision plan for yourselves. So we can see there the word count, 784 words. So that's roughly what you should be aiming to write in that 50 minutes that you're given to write a 40 marker. Within that 50 minutes, that includes planning time. All students who wrote this essay, so this student in particular, was given 10 minutes to plan. Uh, however, they weren't allowed to use the notes during this essay, so it is uh, a real controlled assessment. Um, once you've read the answers you've highlighted, you probably have an idea now of the uh, the marking. I'll explain that the mark that this essay received was 20 out of 40. So it's a 50% answer, which we'd expect to be a high grade D, um, low grade C. And obviously that, that changes year upon year. But yeah, we, we would award this uh, probably a D grade for the student. Now for the assessment objectives, I'll explain this before we go through the details. The vast majority of the AO1, the knowledge and understanding, is level 2. However, it's borderline level 2 and level 3. So I would award this student 8 marks for their for uh, their AO1. They do demonstrate the vast majority of the essay uh, is correct knowledge and it is answering the question that has been asked. However, there are some in inaccuracies and there's lots of opportunities or missed opportunities for development which we'll go through. So it is a level 2 for the AO1. The AL2, the application, the vast majority again is level two. Again, it's borderline with level three. However, there are certain theories and ideas that are, uh, are relevant to the question, but their application of sociological knowledge isn't detailed enough or sufficient enough to get up to level three. So there's certain names missing, certain key terms, which are really important, which could easily improve this application of knowledge and push up to a level three and a level four. And then, probably unsurprisingly, AO3, the analysis and evaluation, again, is a level two um, response. The reason it's level two is the majority of theories are juxtaposed and they're not necessarily linked as effectively as they could be. And there's a lot of specific strengths 
and limitations for each theory that have been identified that have been missed. So by potentially including a little bit more or having more linking sentences, um, the student would have been able to push up to a level three and a level four. Then we might be looking at um, you know, a high 20s, early 30s band, which we'd be expect, uh, expect to award a B to an A grade. So we'll go, go through each paragraph and then you can compare to your own uh, and decide whether or not you uh, have agreed and whether or not you want to keep these parts or whether you want to get rid of them and change them. So the question, ethnic differences in social inequalities are natural and beneficial for society, discussed for 40 marks. This is more or less an identical question that we answered recently for gender inequalities. So we know that if it's going to be natural and beneficial, the examiners are expecting um, a lot of emphasis on functionalism. So the opening paragraph, according to functionalists, society is based upon a biological organism known as the biological analogy. It's a great opening sentence because it's straight away answering and focusing on the theory that the examiners are expecting, which is functionalism, because they're the only people who necessarily would agree with that statement. And it is correct. According to functionalists, society is based upon a biological organism known as the biological analogy. Then they expand each institution that exists in society exists to provide social harmony to ensure that society is maintained and functions smoothly. All individuals in society share a collective conscience, the shared norms and values that acts like a glue holding society together. They believe that society is breaking down and becoming fragmented as a result of globalized changes. Now let's have a look at this sentence here. All individuals in society share a collective conscience, shared norms and values that acts like a glue holding society together. That's entirely correct. We've got specific terminology there for functionalists. And this sentence is going to become really important when we start to link in and focus on Patterson's ideas about ethnic minority groups experiencing inequalities because they don't necessarily share the collective conscience and inequalities being a transitional process to allow ethnic minority groups to start to accept the mainstream norms and values. So that sentence is a really good sentence. However, I don't know where the student went with this point. They believe that society is breaking down and becoming fragmented as a result of globalized changes. That's postmodern, uh, postmodernism or postmodernist thinking. It's not related to functionalism at all. And I'm a little bit unsure about why the student decided to include that sentence in there. I imagine that they've just, um, you know, just remembered that from a recent lesson that was unrelated to functionalism and assumed that it's part of functionalist theory. So that is one part that we definitely need to get rid of because it makes no sense. The rest of that paragraph is absolutely fine. The second paragraph, many functionalists would argue that any social inequalities that exist in society exist for a reason and provide benefits for a society as a whole. It's a great sentence. We know that functionalists do believe that if it exists, it must exist for a reason. We could potentially improve it by making it a little more explicit to the question that's asked um, by referring um, that because these ethnic inequalities exist, they exist for natural reasons and they do uh, benefit for the society as a whole. Really go back and use the wording of the question. However, for most experienced examiners, they'll be able to identify that the student has applied the knowledge there. For example, social class inequalities are believed to help maintain the value consensus by motivating others to follow the norms and values and be justly rewarded. Social inequalities are also used to reward those who are valued and provide significant functions towards the healthy maintenance of society like doctors. Ethnic differences will be no different. They would help maintain the value consensus and ensure that low paid, de-skilled jobs are, uh, that are vital for society are fulfilled. Now, this paragraph is a paragraph that we could really get rid of because the key words there are social class inequalities. We're not actually answering the question that's asked about ethnic minorities. Now, we could make this relevant by making it clear that the vast majority of ethnic minority groups in the UK find themselves in the lower social classes. So they're more likely to be working class then we can really start to use this idea from social class inequalities because hopefully we can identify there this information is correct according to Davis and Moore and according to Gans but the way it's currently structured could be significantly improved to make it more explicit to ethnic uh, inequalities so it would be much uh, would be significantly improved would be a much better paragraph if 
somewhere around here when they're saying, for example, social class inequalities, if they made it a little more explicit that ethnic minority groups are more likely to be working class or are more likely to find themselves in the lower classes, then all of that information is becoming relevant. Because as it stands, it is correct, but it's not necessarily answering the question that was asked. However, the third paragraph is a relatively good paragraph because we get back on um, we get back on task. One functionalist explain the natural process of inequalities through immigration. So here we know straight away that we're referring to Patterson. Including the names isn't essential to get up to level four, but it's an easy way to get up to level four because we know we have to provide relevant detail um, and specific information. We've got to demonstrate that we have learned these ideas and these theories. So we could certainly improve that by saying Patterson explained the natural process of these inequalities through immigration. She believed that when immigrants move to a new society, they slowly need to adapt their own norms and values to the new society. This is a process that takes time and if forced can result in social dysfunction. As an immigrant starts to adapt and accept mainstream norms and values, they will experience a reduction in social inequalities as a reward. This theory is supported by evidence collected from official statistics and the census. So we'll leave it at that point just for now because we are describing Patterson's um, theory and ideas, but this is where the details lack in. All of that information is correct, but we have the key terms, the process, which has been completely ignored by the student. So we know that the first stage is accommodation. So ethnic minority groups, they will focus just on accommodation. And this is where generally they will keep their own norms and values, therefore experience significant inequalities according to this theory. Over a period of time, and it might be generations, they will move from accommodation to integration and they will start to integrate more in mainstream norms and values. This is where the inequalities will start to become reduced. And eventually, they will move from integration to the final stage of assimilation. The ethnic minority group now embraces the mainstream norms and values of the ethnic majority, and therefore the inequality should, um, in theory, be, um, be completely reduced. They should be removed. Now, because that detail is lacking, the AO1 therefore is significantly affected and the AO2 because we're not referring to the details of Patterson's theory. So we could have significantly improved or the student could have significantly improved that paragraph by expanding there on Patterson. This final sentence um, that we're looking at so far, this theory is supported by evidence collected from official statistics and the census. You need to, uh, The student needs to expand on that um, that sentence, they're not actually using any of the official statistics or referencing the sentence. They go on and say the Sikhs report feeling more British than Muslims when asked. That is correct. According to the comparisons of 2001 to the census in 2011, Sikhs do report feeling more British than Muslims. So we can make a more explicit reference to the census uh, that we're referring to. Uh, and Sikhs are less likely to experience poverty and educational failure in comparison to Muslims. Now, there is no st um, statistical evidence that that is correct. What the student has done there is because in the census, uh, the government do ask people about their religious beliefs and their ethnic identity. They have then applied the same religious um, views to educational failure. The government doesn't look at educational success of students based upon their religious um, their religious status. So we have no data to say that Sikhs, for instance, are doing better in schools than Muslims. There is nothing collected by the government on that. So that is incorrect. What the student has done, they've misunderstood the links between the census and educational data. So we know that Pakistanis and Bangladeshi living in Britain are more likely to be Muslim and we know that the vast majority of Sikhs uh, in Britain identify as being either British or British Indian. And that's where they have made the link because the government does collect information about ethnic identity and educational status, but not religion. So there is a little bit incorrect. It's a little bit muddled. We don't have to get rid of it. We just need to maybe reword it to improve um, the, the clarity of what the student is trying to make there with the evidence. However, great signposting word to indicate that we're about to criticise. Functionalists do not take into consideration, sorry, let me get rid of that. 
Um, do not take into consideration the structural barriers that ethnic minorities may face when trying to succeed in societies such as racism and discrimination. That's a good sentence, that's a great sentence, but it could be improved, it could be better by explaining what do we mean by um, ignoring these um, these barriers. So for instance, could it be, if we go back to that earlier sentence, where we're referring to Sikhs feeling more integrated than Muslims, that maybe Muslims face more barriers, there are more labels and more negative stereotypes and ideas, uh, uh, you know, prejudice ideas surrounding Islam than there are um, for Sikhs and that is something that is restricting their experience of of integration in society. It's not that Muslims don't want to integrate into British society, it's maybe that British people won't allow Muslims to integrate as much as they would allow other ethnic groups to potentially integrate and that could be one of the structural barriers that has been referred to there. Uh, the second criticism they also view society through rose tinted glasses, which is not good for everybody, uh, not good for everyone. That's too generic. They're not explaining what that actually means. They need to expand on that so that it receives zero marks. It's far too generic because we could use that exact same sentence for any um, functionalist essay. So we need to expand on that and say, for example, we're assuming here, according to this theory, according to Patterson's theory, that, uh, that these inequalities that are experienced by ethnic minorities are good and beneficial when actually for the individuals who are experiencing the inequalities it's not beneficial it's not good for these individuals to experience uh, poverty unemployment etc so therefore it might be good for society but it's not good for the individuals who are experiencing that and if we have such inequalities could those inequalities actually contribute to social dysfunction so certain groups um, not responding well together and um, hostilities and um, social harmony being affected as a result of certain groups experiencing more inequalities, more poverty, more unemployment, etc. Now we're moving on to Marxism here. If we just have a look, we've got 320 words that are dedicated to uh, functionalist theory. If we include Patterson's ideas and add those details surrounding accommodation, integration, assimilation, if we expand a little bit more on a couple of the evaluative points, those AO3 points, then we're likely to be up to around 400, maybe even 450 words, which would mean that our essay is now balanced. AO1 and knowledge of um, functionalism and applying it to the question is about half of the essay, which we know from the assessment criteria is what it should be. It should be 16 out of um, the 40, including um, the A or 2 marks that we're also scoring. It should be the vast majority of our essay. So that is a good indication that the student is effectively planning and, um, and using the, the time effectively to answer this essay question. So now we're starting to move into the other theories. Marxists, on the other hand, would certainly disagree with the view that ethnic differences in social inequalities are natural and beneficial for society. They suggest that inequalities are created and maintained by the bourgeoisie to maintain power and control over the economic superstructure. Marxists believe that concepts such as racism were originally developed as a tool to justify uh, the control and exploitation of the proletariat. However, Marxists ignore patriarchy and gender when explaining inequalities. Now, this sentence here or these first two sentences are very good sentences the opening sentence makes it really clear that marxists disagree with functionalist views it also links in to the question that's being asked so now we're not necessarily just juxtaposing an argument we're not saying that marxists necessarily have different views we're saying they have different views and they agree or they disagree for these reasons so it's a very good linking sentence and then we're starting to expand and open up the Marxist ideas that the inequalities were created um, by the bourgeoisie and to help maintain their position at the top, the 1%. Now, Marxists believe that concepts such as racism were originally developed as a tool to justify the control and exploitation of the proletariat. This is where we, we need to expand. We could include their referring to Cox, who identifies that the concept of race didn't exist before capitalism started to emerge in Western Europe and colonial um, well, Western countries, white Western European countries such as uh, Britain, Spain, 
um, Belgium, the Netherlands started to uh, colonize other parts of the world and they would often use race to justify the exploitation of uh, the individuals uh, who were living uh, in these these regions, these these places. Um, we could also then expand this part here, exploitation of the proletariat by linking it to Castles and Corsac, who argue that um, Castles and Corsac argue that these inequalities help alienate the proletariat in a modern day capitalist society. So instead of uniting all the workers together and saying, oh, we're all experiencing inequalities, they start to focus on the various differences between each ethnic group it's effectively separating, alienating the proletariat to prevent them from uniting and potentially having a revolution. You could expand Castles and Kozak. They also talk about scapegoating um, and being able to divert the tensions away from the failure of capitalism. But because this isn't a Marxist question, we don't want to go too much into detail with Marxism because then we're not necessarily using it as a tool to evaluate functionalism and evaluate the question that's asked. We're starting to waste time by going down a route and explaining Marxist views, which is not the necessarily um, expected by the examiners when answering this question. But we could definitely improve that paragraph by including Cox and a little reference to Castles and Corsac. However, Marxists ignore patriarchy and gender when explaining the inequalities. It's not receiving any marks, let's just get rid of it for the time being. The student does talk about feminism um, a few paragraphs down. However, if we start to criticise Marxism with another theory, it doesn't make a lot of sense because we're being asked to discuss whether or not we think ethnic differences in social inequalities are natural and beneficial. So if we start criticising with Marxism and then criticising Marxism with another group of individuals who wouldn't agree with that sentence at the start or the question that's being asked or the statement that we're being asked to discuss, then it's not a very good coherent um, essay answer. A third theory is social action developed by Weber. He suggests that ethnic minorities lack the market situation in order to experience upward social mobility. They generally work in the transport industry, which has no status or economic resources and are underrepresented in parties. Um, it's largely correct. We know that Weber didn't necessarily talk about ethnic minority groups. He just talked about social stratification. So we might want to make it clear that we're applying Weber's theory rather than saying that he suggested ethnic minorities because he didn't. Immigration wasn't um, to the same extent that it is um, in a modern day society when Weber was writing his work. However, this idea, uh, this paragraph, this section of the essay is massively improved when they start talking about Baron and Norris. So we've got a key name there. Baron and Norris applied the ideas originally proposed by Weber to their own theory of a dual labour market, another key term included. They suggest that status is extremely important when understanding social stratification. They believe that many employers embrace racist stereotypes when considering the employability of workers from an ethnic minority, such as believing that black males are unreliable. This negative status often results in ethnic minorities being restricted to secondary labour market positions, which are lower paid and reduce the chances of upward social mobility. However, an issue with this theory is that Baron and Norris failed to explain where the negative racist stereo view, uh, stereotypical views come from in the first place. So before we include that criticism, let's just focus on this part where they're talking about Baron and Norris. We have detail, which is great A01, because we've got the key term, the dual labor market. It is associated with Baron and Norris, so it is correct. We've got an example there, black males being viewed as unreliable. Baron and Norris's research does suggest that a lot of employers hold that racist stereotypical view. It could be improved, however, because we haven't referenced anything about whether or not these inequalities are natural and beneficial. We know straight away that Baron and Norris wouldn't necessarily agree that they are natural. They would say that it's actually derived from interactions and these interactions that result in negative stereotypes aren't beneficial for society because it's resulting in certain groups then experiencing the secondary labour market. So it's not necessarily applied to the question as effectively as it could be. However, it is still scoring as A01 marks. If we have a look at this sentence, However, an issue with the theory is that Baron and Norris failed to explain where the negative racist stereotypical views come from in the first place. That's correct. We could therefore link that to Marxism because we know that Marxists suggest that 
race as a concept was developed by the bourgeoisie to exploit individuals that would explain where the racist stereotypical views come from in the first place um, so it could be expanded however it does score as AO3 marks it could um, just go into a little more detail to, to push it to really demonstrate to the examiner that we understand why that is such a limitation of their theory um, a final theory so this is the fourth one now um, to consider when explaining ethnic inequalities in a contemporary society is black feminist views black feminists would argue that inequalities is sorry inequalities experienced by women from an ethnic minority are far more significant than those experienced by men or white women uh, Cornell argues that such inequalities are not natural but in fact a product of colonialism not only do women suffer from patriarchy for the benefit of men but also from racism due to historical western uh, colonialism ideas surrounding gender that originate from western capitalist society are still negatively affecting non-white women across the world Cornell suggests that mainstream feminism that is developed in the West therefore cannot help or explain the experiences of ethnic minority women and that more specific explanations need to be made. Misery suggests that black feminism as a result is challenging the ideas that ethnic minority women are passive and subordinate. Instead, images of strength and independence are being promoted in response. So this is a good paragraph because we have specific, two specific key uh, black feminists. So we've got Connell and Misra, uh, Connell and Misra, who are correctly being uh, explained. We also have a good link to the question. So, sorry, I'm just trying to find it again. Um, <laughs> there we go. Oh, sorry, I can't find it. There we go, sorry, sorry. Um, <laughs> Connor would argue that such inequalities are not natural, but in fact a product of colonialism. Um, there's a link to the question that it, it took me quite a while to find there, but it is a clear link to that, that statement. So therefore we are discussing, so it, it massively improves the AO2, the application of this paragraph. Um, and this is one of the reasons why I said it was borderline level two or level three. If the other paragraphs contain something as simple as a sentence like that, demonstrating that we are discussing that statement, then it would clearly be a level three answer. But because we're only seeing that for this theory and not necessarily for the previous theories explicitly as it could be, then I think it is borderline and we'll always go with the, the lower um, when we're, when we're bordering on the, the level criteria, we'll always go for a level two rather than increasing the, the grade to a level three. Um, but it is correct, and misery is there is correct. Um, there's no criticisms, no limitations of black feminism that are being included, um, which you could potentially, uh, potentially include. And then we've got the final conclusion. Uh, there are many different explanations of the differences. Um, it should be faced by different ethnic groups and the inequalities that they face. So we could change that just so it's a little more coherent. Issues like immigration are bound to contribute to the inequalities, but to completely ignore structural factors such as prejudice, discrimination and racism seems illogical. In order to reduce the social inequalities faced, uh, faced they government so again we need to the government and uh, need to look out to speed up the the settling in process for immigrants whilst continuing to promote new laws and legislations that prevent discrimination it's a good conclusion because we are effectively referring to patterson's host immigration model whilst also referencing the fact that um, prejudice racism and discrimination are impacting which links to social action theory and black feminism we could also include a little bit of a reference to accepting that, you know, somebody's making money from the fact that ethnic minority groups are paid less, um, which obviously is going to be the bourgeoisie. So we could refer to the fact that the economy does in some way benefit from ethnic minorities. So we're also including Marxism in our conclusion. But it is a reasonably good conclusion if we could just uh, improve the quality of written communication. So hopefully you've been able to have a look through that essay and identify some of those strengths and areas that need changing i'd like you to change those areas if you haven't done already so for instance here we need to expand and include patterson uh, rewrite that paragraph to, to refer to those three key terms accommodation integration and assimilation 
maybe trying to make more explicit references back to the question like we like the student has done for black feminism and a little bit there for marxism especially for social action theory and you could use um, the sheet that we that you hopefully have previously completed um with regards to the evaluation points and include a few more evaluative points to push those ao3 marks up okay year 12 hope you're all keeping safe and i will um i'll set you some more work for next week